Hey One Tree Hill fans, welcome back, thanks for being here. So I'm going to watch episode 18, To Wish Impossible Things. Just got done listening to the podcast and it was so awesome that they had Maura Kelly on it. And it was a very emotional podcast. So I feel I found myself tearing up a few times. Did you? <laughs> so I'm gonna watch this one. This one is funny to me because of the boy toy auction. <laughs> I adore that Whitey is the auctioneer, although I always did think that this was kind of a weird thing for them to do with the high school boys. I mean, auctions, I do agree, are kind of archaic. They're just archaic. They're just really, they are gross, kind of. And then the moms, you know, trying to, like, bid on these boys, it was just like, oh, this is kind of uncomfortable, but I love watching Whitey in this one because he's just having so much fun, and I love when Whitey's having fun. Brooke trying to pay, pay with a credit card for one of the boys is hilarious. I do love Haley's confidence in not, um, you know, bidding for Nathan and instead going for Lucas because she's like, I get Nathan for free. I love that. Oh, the collective groan of all the women when it's Tim's turn. <laughs> but Whitey's face when Tim comes out is the best. It's like, I like when Whitey starts going down in the auction price. Then I hear 30. How about 20? But I do always find it weird that Deb is there. And not, of course, bidding on her own son, but at an auction where her son is being auctioned off. And it's just, it always struck me as kind of weird like uncomfortable okay and then she comes out with the eight dollars for tim because she has chores around the house i'm like okay so if she wasn't there bidding because she didn't come with money obviously like what was she doing there it's so weird to me but it's hilarious that she bid it on tim it's like a mercy bid the laugh that whitey gives when jake comes out in the raven's uh mascot costume is just so I feel like that's genuine I feel so bad for Peyton when she gets bit outbid for bidding for Jake so and then you see Lucas coming out just like okay just kind of walking around <laughs> when Haley bids 115 for Lucas and she's like cafe savings no way he's worth it though kind of great I always love how confident Nathan is coming out of the last, like, premier boy toy auction. And I love that he was so nervous. He didn't like doing that. Like, him, his, not his character, uh, James Lafferty was, like, very shy about that. But you never know it when he comes out on stage as Nathan. And I love that because it's just good acting. Oh, my God. How high the bidding goes up for Nathan right immediately, and Haley just like, whoa, wait a minute, and Peyton like smells like sex in here. This, this whole scene was just hilarious because then she starts bidding, Haley starts bidding on Nathan after saying she wasn't gonna do it. Oh my gosh, asking your boyfriend's ex to bid on him to hang out with him for a night, that takes guts. And then. <laughs> When Whitey says, oh, to Brooke, I'm sorry, we're all out of flesh. <laughs> Gotta love that Mouth goes for the highest $200. It's so cute. I really thought that Deb was smarter than that. To say all those very induendo like wordings to Tim, you might, you're going to want to take a shower when I'm done with you. We're going to get dirty, bring a change of clothes. I'm like, come on, weird. Mickey bidding on Jake. Oh, how clever. <laughs> it's so cute when Haley's like, don't have fun to Nathan about going to hang out with Peyton right in front of Peyton. And then he's like, I won't. She's like, oh. It's like, wait a minute, didn't you just tell him not to have fun? <laughs> and when Peyton, and then when Nathan is like, oh, let's get this over with. And she, Peyton tells Haley, hmm, that's what he used to say before we had sex. And Haley's just like, oh. On the podcast, they kind of reiterated what I said a little bit on my last video about how 
this huge thing of Nathan being emancipated and getting this apartment was very, very just kind of overlooked almost. It was very glossed over. But it is, I do want to say that um, one of the points they made was that how did he have the money? Well, he said that he had, he cleared out his savings for all of this. And as far as the fight and the court thing, like, I don't think we would have seen that because of the way that he presented this to his parents. It was very much like, if you don't do this, you really are going to lose me forever. I felt I really got that from him when he handed them the papers because it was like they knew what they had done was wrong. I mean, they couldn't keep doing that to him and they weren't going to get it together. So he had to do it. And I think that was to me, that was implied, honestly, through everything. So I while it was glossed over because a lot of things really jump off with this apartment, there were things that I think were explained, maybe not. It was more subtext than actual putting it out there, though. The look on Peyton's face when she's like, what are we supposed to eat? You don't have furniture. And, and Nathan's like, we have the bed. And she just looks so shocked by that. I, I feel like this is a little over the top, but it was still funny. Just for the record, I never buy anything of what Nikki says. You know, upon this rewatch, I have to say, I feel like Larry Peyton's dad, you know, having this little date with Karen is almost like the mirror that Karen cannot not look into. Like, he just makes her face certain things in this really nonchalant kind of way. When Lucas says he wants to get over, he just wants to play ball and get over all this drama. I'm like, dude, you kind of caused the drama. Hello? And now hearing Bethany's um, st or Joy's story about the, the water balloon hitting her head like 29 times, like, that is awful. And then it was cold on top of that? Like, ugh. Behind the scenes, man, can really ruin the magic. <laughs> but that's awful for her. I cannot imagine having to just stand there and take that that many times. Like, ugh. I like corrupting America's youth. It's kind of one of my hobbies. Such a Brooklyn. When Nate throws Peyton into that pool, I have to say she was a lot chill, a lot nicer about that than I would have been. Oh my God, that made me so mad. The corrupting of Mouse McFadden, courtesy of Brooke Davis. The entire thing with Deb and Tim and that whole miscommunication trope popular thing and then it but that whole scene was very much a guy fantasy writing type thing it was just like oh come on Deb I mean I don't know I just still always find it so weird that she wouldn't be like clarify more with Tim because Tim's stupid and apparently the entire town knows it the fact that he's jumping, he's like in a, what was it, a leopard skin, like, speedo or what underwear or whatever, and she calls him Timmy when he's running away, just as like the cherry on top of that whole awkward Sunday. And then Dan walking in. Okay, first off, why is Dan there? I thought they were like separated. He wasn't there. And then it's like for him to walk in right then and there, like, oh, come on man writing because I can't Lucas and Haley were having this magical time and then he sees her tattoo and of course it's of Nathan's jersey number and then he's like it's just like him to get you branded with his number and she's like he doesn't even know about it and you did it by yourself yes because I love him and it was supposed to be like this beautiful moment between friends and telling him and it's just so Ugh. I do love what she says when Haley tells Lucas you hold me to a higher standard than you do with other people and it's not fair and he acknowledges it's not fair but he says I've seen you be better than the rest of us or most people and I love that because it really kind of sums up Haley's whole character like truthfully and then of course it cuts scene to Lucas and Haley being Lucas and Haley and having that wonderful friendship moment and it all gets worked out in a lovey-dovey, like, nice little package. But she's being so real. And she's like, 
if I have this 20 years from now and I look at it and I remember how I feel being in love the first time, I think I'll be okay with that. But I don't know if he is in love. And that's just like, it's real talk. And she was just, again, this is just her character. She's so much more mature than everybody else. <laughs> Such a contrast on the friend moment between Lucas and Haley and then Nathan and Peyton and Peyton being like, don't you screw things up with Haley, essentially. <laughs> He's like, you said I was good in bed. Oh, kill me now. I feel so bad with Jake and Nikki trying to like suck him back in again. But it just, then he's like, then he just pulls away and he keeps his daughter firmly in place. And he's so just another, you know, really good guy moment. Only Keith could get away with walking into a high school basketball coach's office going, how did the pimp duty go? Like, charity auction coordinator. <laughs> I love when Keith is like, yeah, you didn't want to auction yourself off. And Whitey's like, no one could afford me. <laughs> Damn right. I will say it's kind of hard when, you know, I hear Whitey say that to Keith specifically about you're not living, Keith, you're dying. And every day you wait is another day you won't get back. Foreshadowing. I enjoy that this episode really kind of shows the infancy the beginnings of mouth and brooks friendship that will come it's very cute very sweet it was funny shout out to the limo driver who when mouth goes what do girls want and he was talking to brooke but the limo driver goes half your paycheck the anger that Jake has with Nikki is completely justified. And I think it was good because I have a fe get the feeling from that scene when he walks away from Nikki that she's never really had anybody put her in her place. She's used to her tactics working to get her way. So I love that Jake didn't fall for it. Larry is also kind of an in an, a bad influence, but he's good in a way for Karen because she doesn't do stuff like that. So them digging up the, getting drunk and digging up the, the old, um, her old, um, buried time capsule is great because we don't really see that a lot. And we do see that more so with Larry because that brings it out in her. But he's right. There's a difference between growing up and growing old. Speaking of reality checks, I think when Brooke is in the club and she sees that guy that she doesn't remember, but he remembers her and she just has like this whole aha moment like a horrifying one and she's just like oh my god I need to change some things <laughs> I do like the real moment that Brooke has with Mouth about just wanting someone to want her back I mean like they said on the podcast I think that's all that that's a big thing of what most people want and then of course we see Karen <laughs> doing the Raven's Cheers they're digging up her time capsule. That was so great. Keith in the background of that old picture is just so telling. And then Larry says it, you know, well, the boy in the background definitely in love with the girl in the foreground. And then we see Whitey walk in. What the hell's going on? It just wouldn't be complete without Whitey walking in on them. Seriously, it's great. Whitey's look of complete shock when he sees that it's Karen is just amazing. And then, of course, the moment's kind of ruined when Keith walks up and sees her having so much fun with this guy, and he just instantly walks away without a word. Awkward. The heart to heart with Peyton and Nathan, and him just being like, I owe it to Haley to be better. She deserves more. Like, I love that. Here come Lucas and Haley up the stairs to go to Nathan's apartment. And she's like, oh, hey, can you go ask him if he's in love with me? And if he says no, break up with him for me, OK? seriously say something nice and then it's like I always get that really like oh god what is Lucas gonna walk in on <sighs> I hate that Lucas sees Peyton and Nathan I mean yeah Peyton and Nathan kissing because it's just like it really wasn't what he thinks and it is one of those times usually it is like 99.9% .9 of the time it usually is but it's one of those times that it's totally not when Haley uh, tells Lucas, you owe me a goodnight kiss, and they're both just like, oh, uh. <laughs> Was anybody surprised that Nikki basically threatened Jake? I wasn't. Karen is an in-demand lady. <laughs> She's got one guy on the front porch, 
talking about I really like you and another one on the back porch with a ring. Decisions, decisions. Okay, so it's kind of funny because I never really caught the first time around that like what was going on with the whole Brooke I think I might be pregnant situation with Lucas. Um, but now that I'm rewatching it with that knowledge, I have to wonder, did the whole chat with Mouth kind of prompt her to say this to Lucas, to, to, to tell him all of this? Because Mouth was so talking up how good of a guy Lucas is and all that sorts of stuff. So now I feel like that conversation really pushed her to do that and I never really caught that before but yeah a lot happens in this episode so as we get closer to the end of this season things start really popping off <laughs> so thanks for being here with me I hope you enjoyed if you did feel free to like and subscribe until next time